Millennials are America's future and often its favorite punchline. People say we're young, but the oldest millennials are nearing 40. People say we're dumb, but we're the most educated generation ever. And people say we're spoiled, but we're the first generation in American history who'll be worse off financially than our parents. We're traveling across the country to find out how young Americans are surviving, and in some cases thriving. I'm Brad Hunt, and this is American Paycheck. A massive tech boom has made Austin one of the fastest growing cities in the country, with young people working in jobs and industries that didn't exist a decade ago. I work at HEB. I'm a quality engineer for Whirlpool. And what brought you to Austin? Um, a job that I don't work at anymore. <laughs> We're here at one of the city's most prominent tech startups, the virtual reality video game developer, Alchemy Labs. My name is Devin Reimer. I am the CE Owl at Alchemy Labs. I first got my TI-83 graphing calculator um, in school, and I started to learn that I could actually program things on it. Um, so one of the first things I did is started making games um, and then applications, and I actually wrote an application to solve physics problems for my grade 11 physics class. And so I gave my apps to a friend, and then he gave it to his friend, and his friend, and his friend. And then what ended up happening was everybody in the class had the same application, um, and then all failed the test in the exact same way. There was one bug inside the application. <laughs> <laughs> Every video game we make can make zero dollars. It's like, that's what we're planning for, right from, right from day one. It's like, hey, we're working on an independent game, we're gonna spend like a year on it, but the books need to balance if we make zero dollars. And so what we used to do is contract work before it, and we'd save up just enough money that we could get through that, and then we finished it, and then roll on to the next one. Because what we saw with everybody else was like, video games are so hit-driven that if you sink everything you have into the one video game, assuming it's gonna be the one that's gonna take off and it doesn't, then your company collapses. And we're like, that's not sustainable, not the way we wanna run things. And so we, we ran into the zero dollar thing uh, and it worked really well, because sometimes we would have hits, sometimes we wouldn't. And it allowed us to always just move on to the next thing and get better. Most of our expenses in the early days was just eating ourselves, right? It's like, how do I put a roof over my own head and how do I eat long enough that we can kind of like do this stuff? With um, Job Simulator, part of the thing that was magical in that is the freedom to do what you wanted within that space. And so it's like, at any point, it's like, okay, I want to pick up a cup, I want to fill it up with coffee, and I want to toss it at a bot across the uh, across the cubicle, right? And then all of a sudden, overnight, our game with a few thousand people all of a sudden went to a few million people. I know it sounds crazy that someone would work all day and then come home to play a video game about working. But when you consider that 71% of millennials feel disengaged at their job, it starts to make some sense. This is the new Austin. Ergonomic chairs, computers, and motion sensors everywhere. But this is where our employees work. It's the most open floor plan that's possible with a VR studio. We have our chill pod here, um, which is kind of where we encourage employees, you know, if they need to get up and kind of refresh their brain and go in here. If there's scooters, there's like little like yoga balls that we have and like lacrosse balls. So take a moment away from your desk to kind of chill. So it's the chill pod. In my role at Alchemy, so it's studio director, marketing, knowledge, it's my full title. I went to university initially for journalism at UT and then switched over to PR. Um, but I only made games as a hobby. I was always interested in video games, like I would play them with my brother, um, and then kind of got interested in making them. My senior year, it was, it was definitely like a, oh, I kind of have to make this choice. Am I gonna do something that's more stable, that's more like what my degree, what I thought I was gonna do with my degree? Um, or kind of take a risk. And so I did decide to take a risk. I, I quit a kind of well-paying internship so that I could have more hours because I was like, I need to dedicate the time into VR because it was like, there's something really captivating about it that it made me want to be a part of it. I mean, it's like, we're kind of in the beginning of the future of VR right now. So how can you not, how, how can you resist that? So I started out doing contract gigs. And so at that time too, it's like a lot of VR companies we're bootstrapping and so you're kind of taking on a lower pay because you're a startup. It was a lot of like juggling, um, choosing smaller apartments, uh, cho like getting roommates. So I, my rent was like 400 bucks instead of 800 bucks. And that's like a really small like apartment in Austin. You kind of have to do those things to survive. Uh, there are neighborhoods where older houses are being torn down. They're rising the rent there and forcing those people out. And that's happened a lot here. Some people come to Austin for reasons other than following their dreams or pursuing business opportunities. Chris moved across the planet to marry his wife, but being in love doesn't pay the bills. So my name's Chris, um, 35, originally from Sydney, Australia, and I've been in Austin for 
three and a half years or so now. So right now I do uh, Uber and Lyft during the day and then do the scooter stuff at night time. And that way it sort of gives me a bunch of freedom to do what I want. Not every tech job is glamorous. Chris makes his living doing the legwork that's often left out of the hopeful Silicon stories. He collects and charges some of the over 17,000 electric scooters that have flooded the city. When it first came out, it was really good. They paid seven bucks a scooter when they first launched. And so you could do real well, because you know you could. there was not many people doing it, so there wasn't as much competition. See what we can find here. If you guys hear one, feel free to tell me, because we're, we're, we're having it. We're shit out of luck tonight. And then you get to ones like this that just don't exist. They'll try and pick up a scooter and it's just not worth it for me to drive. You know, if you spend 10, 15 minutes to get one, you've missed out on another four. And people just don't usually leave them where they're supposed to. And so once you get to the scooter, it actually tells you on here the, the serial number. Oh, then um, you can just check it. And so you can check it. So you hit the, the harvest button and it gives you a little light. And there's, a, there's a little barcode. You scan it, it tells you how much you're gonna make for it, how much battery life it's got. This one has 37% left, so it's gonna take around about two hours to charge. And then when do you have to drop it back on? They let you drop it off once it's fully charged, anytime before 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, it's not, it's not very good. If you uh, tan it, I don't usually come home without at least 12. I think Australians are known for being more relaxed. I mean, we have a minimum at a full-time job of 20 annual leave days a year or vacation days. When I came here and I, you know, I looked around at getting a couple of full-time jobs and they offer you, most of them, somewhere around the 10 days, you know, it, it, it seems like it's all work and no play. It, it doesn't take an intelligent person to do it, but I think you can be better at in everything you do in life, you can be better than the next person at doing it. And you learn really quick that you need to work out how to budget because when you run out of money, you run out of money real fast. Is Austin's tech gold rush a glimpse into the future for the rest of the South or just a boom and bust? Only time will tell. For now, all that matters is tomorrow's paycheck.